and welcome to this in-depth paint with me video where I'm going to go through and explain my process from start to finish. Before we hop right into it don't forget to like and subscribe. So first things first I usually draw my images on my iPad through Procreate and then print out the sketch or liner on a low opacity setting. I just find this much easier than going through the process of having to redraw the image and it saves the paper from being unnecessarily ripped apart by my eraser if I accidentally make a mistake. In the end the result is still the same which is that it gets covered in paint and you can't even see the lines by the end so I enjoy this method and it works best for me currently. So we are using one of my favorite paints, which is the Acrylic Wash by Holbein. This stuff has a very, very interesting consistency. So, so you'll get to see how I go about making this very opaque, but essentially I have to start with the base colors of the piece. Sometimes I will use watercolor, but I decided to go with a thin layer of gouache first, and I'm starting with the background behind my character. I try to start also on the left side of the image and work my way to the right side, just so I don't accidentally stick my hand in paint. So the acrylic wash, when you're first putting it down out of the tube, as you can see the blue that I'm applying here, while it is bright and beautiful, it is very splotchy and streaky. This part of the process I pretty much hate the most because it's just so unclean <laughs> to look at, but it's the first layer and the first layers are always pretty much going to look like trash. Another way that I could have done this was that I just go in really thick, added the white to the blue, but I prefer working in layers. It gives me, I feel it gives me more control. Now it's time for the second layer, so I mix a little bit of white with the blue until I get the right color that I'm needing. This way when I apply it I'm not going to have really light patches and really dark patches. The purpose of the first layer is essentially to just prepare it so that when you do put this color over top there isn't going to be any streaky patches or splotches or anything. It's going to be nice and opaque. As you can see as I'm applying this layer over top it's already starting to look a lot more seamless and velvety smooth. As for the reason why I started with the blue, it's because it's the probably the darkest color that I'm using and it's also the backdrop of the character. When it comes to paints where you can make them quite thick, I have the freedom to put lighter colors over top, so I try to work from the back to the front. But there are a few exceptions, such as the top of her dress there, I decided to do that as well. Darker colors are going to cover up things a little bit easier than lighter colors. But moving on, I am now applying a mixture of that same blue with black to the backdrop. So I start with it being more opaque and then I fade it out by rinsing and drying my brush and then kind of pulling that paint outwards. Sometimes I will use my damp brush to mix whatever is still not fully dried so I can just blend the two together. It's a very fine window <laughs> because once acrylic gouache is fully dry it's not going to budge, it's not going to move anywhere. I try not to overwhelm myself with too many colors at one point otherwise they're not going to blend seamlessly. I'm going to run out of time and they're going to dry and you're stuck with it. Okay, so now I'm onto the skin and I decided to go with a nice bright orange to complement the really deep rich blue. If you want to know more about how I choose my colors, you can always check out my video on how I use color. I touch base on a lot of things to do with how colors influence us as well as color theory, so go give that a watch if you're interested. And just like before, I am mixing the two colors together with a mixture of orange and magenta. I want her skin to fade to a tone of purple, but it's going to take a little bit of work. If I try and mix purple and orange together, I'm going to get some muddy colors. So I have to kind of put a transition color in the middle so that it fades more seamlessly and isn't yucky. <laughs> I like to add shadows and depth through color rather than using black, so I use black as little as possible where I can. 
So after another layer of those colors on top, I begin defining the shadows with these same colors too. Most of the time I'll start off with an opaque section and then I will pull the colors out with my damp brush, creating a really nice soft velvety fade. This is going to be a lot of rinse and repeat now. I use this technique in watercolor as well as in gouache and it seems to, to just work for me. If the fade is looking very light and streaky, I will go over it with the base color and try to mix the two colors together to give it a little bit more opaqueness. But as I build up the layers and the depth, I will start defining certain sections such as the eyes, the nose, the lips, the ears, until the image is finally complete. So as I'm going through defining this, adding depth, making everything look smooth and blended, I also have a couple of questions to answer. I did a Q&A post on my community tab as well as on my Instagram and I was surprised that I actually got quite a few answers. I wasn't expecting to get, I wasn't expecting to get any. Um, so <laughs> thank you, thank you. I've got quite a few. If you don't want to miss out on any polls or questionnaires or behind the scenes, don't forget to check me out on my Instagram at Catagonics or just check out the community tab on my channel. First question I've gotten quite a bit is where do I get my inspiration from or who is my biggest inspiration? That's a bit of a tricky one because I have so many. That's why you can sometimes see my art style just well I don't really have one what am I talking about you guys probably think I have one but to me I don't feel like I have one because it's always changing I have specific techniques that do suit me so that can somewhat define my style but otherwise I get most of my inspiration from people on YouTube I love watching people in their little studios creating things Studio Ghibli movies are also a massive inspiration one of my favorite movies of all time has to be Spirited Away which I just saw at the movie theater <laughs> There was an exclusive screening for their 20th anniversary. It was, it was magical. It was so magical. Uh, what else? Plants, cute kawaii things, spiritual, magical things as well. Lots of stuff inspires me. And I try to surround myself with more of these things and people like this because I know it's going to motivate me and help me be more creative and positive. If I had to pick someone who inspires me the most currently it would have to be the French artist Sibylline or is it Sibylline? Forgive me if I've gotten that pronunciation completely wrong. Next question is what is my favorite art supply and at this point in time it has to be Holbein's acrylic gouache. <laughs> it used to be watercolor but gouache is holding its own it's just it's so beautiful and if I had to suggest a cheaper alternative um, I'd probably try out Arteza to be honest. It's the brand that I used to use before I made the switch. Otherwise I know Winsor & Newton makes a very very nice uh, gouache as well. I've only tried a couple of colors from their line but they're more easily accessible to more people around the world so check those two brands out. Uh, so how do I gather and use my inspiration or do I use any references? Yes from time to time I use references. Um, it depends on the situation. Uh, this particular art piece I didn't really use. I maybe had like one reference and even then it was just so that I could get the eyes of my character correct. <laughs> um, I didn't use any other references otherwise. It just comes to me sometimes. I have a pretty good visual memory. If I see something that I really like I could have seen it ages ago and it will just sit in the back of my mind. It's really hard for me to answer this question honestly uh, because I have just legions of inspiring images. I consume so much content all the time on a daily basis and I don't let that bulk me down either. <laughs> Generally if I'm struggling with a piece I'll whip out more references so that I can reference angles, shapes, even certain color palettes from time to time but if the idea in my head is pretty solid then all I gotta do is just draw it, play with a few colors and then I'm good. The inspiration I get on a day-to-day -day basis consuming content all the time is enough just sitting at the back of my mind. Probably need to reference or practice anatomy and 
other things in my sketchbook more often, but I don't. <laughs> I just want to get to the exciting part, which is the painting. <laughs> Right, moving on from that really difficult question, how much do I plan before I do a painting and do I have a sketchbook or anything dedicated to prep work before I actually begin a piece? I try to keep planning to a minimum because the planning stage is utter ass. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. <laughs> I hate it, but I know it's very necessary. Do I have a sketchbook dedicated to it? No. <laughs> um, I very rarely use my sketchbook anymore, I must admit. I love sketchbooks, they feel great. And they look great but I, I gotta admit I'm really really bad at practicing or doodling. My iPad is my best friend when it comes to prepping my art whether for digital or for traditional. It's where I will sketch out an image, it's where I will plan colors, it's where I do all of my planning now. Which is a bit of a shame because it's gonna be hard for me to actually show any sketchbook tours if I don't actually use my sketchbooks. One day I hope to fill one. <laughs> Next up is how much time do I spend on average on an artwork? See, this is where all of my time goes. <laughs> if I had to say roughly how long this one took, it took me between six to eight hours, I believe. I'm very meticulous and I want to get things as perfect as I can get them. And with the two mediums that I use the most, Holbein acrylic gouache and watercolor, you really have to take your time with these mediums. Most of the paintings I will do will be anywhere between six to 10 hours, depending on what it is that I'm painting. Which medium do I prefer more, gouache or watercolor? I'm a gouache girl right now. When did I really get into art? Okay, if we're talking seriously, then it would have been two years ago when I started my YouTube channel. If we're talking just in general, when I discovered that art was kind of a thing for me, I'd probably say five, six years old. I took the time when I was a kid to actually try and get my images correct and I'd do it over and over and over again. Every time I'd finish a piece I'd feel really proud and excited that I did it but then a good few hours later or a day later or a week later I'd notice all the flaws and how I could improve so I'd do it again and again and again. I don't let the flaws cause me grief essentially. I, I see them for what they are, I see how I can fix it next time and yeah, I just pretty much learn from it, I guess. I don't draw things over and over and over again like I used to though. That part has changed for me, which I probably should get back into, which is basically the practicing, having a sketchbook and actually practicing. But I drew Sonic the Hedgehog so many times as a kid, trying to perfect what he looked like. This leads on to another question, which is, um, do I ever feel like quitting on an art piece when it's not turning out how I planned? And if not, how do I go about fixing and polishing it? I find this one very interesting because that kind of was what I was explaining just before. I do get annoyed sometimes. I do struggle sometimes with an art piece that isn't going my way, but I try not to let it frustrate me. Again, this is why planning is so important in the beginning, because if I don't plan and I start painting just straight away, I'm going to get frustrated with it. Cut out all of that dilly-dallying and actually prepare my art, I won't run into that roadblock. There are times I do feel like quitting on a drawing that I've started and there are drawings that I've begun and then haven't finished because it's just, I don't know, I've been a little bit lazy with my preparation. Most of my art pieces I see to the end, it's very important that I see it to the end. I don't have a mass of doodles that I've never completed because I just, I don't really doodle. I do quit on some art pieces, I don't feel bad about it. At that point, if I have quit on an art piece, it's because I am just so frustrated with it. And that's not fun. <laughs> Sometimes I will chuck my art out and I know people say that it's bad but I just want it out of my life at that point that art piece is now a negative rather than a positive I don't do it often any issues that will arise with my art always will happen usually within the first few stages of planning if I can't get it right in the planning I'm not going to paint it <laughs> the painting part flows very easily for me it's it's not often that it doesn't work out so I don't usually have to think about how I can try and fix a problem or polish it but if that does happen the high likelihood is that I will definitely struggle and I will quit on it because the painting part is the best part it can't make me feel bad <laughs> I need to enjoy myself that's going to be all of the questions for today 
Thank you to everyone who did ask me a question. I'm sorry if I didn't get to your specific question, but I'm sure I'll be able to do another one of these in the future one day. Maybe have a longer Q&A video perhaps. I hope this video was informative and inspiring. If it was, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already clicked that button. Thanks so much for watching. You take it easy, stay real, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.